Welcome to Trick Tac Toe, everyone. My name is Frank. So what happens if you leave the beaten path and you lose your cell phone signal? What happens if the cell phone towers go down altogether? While it may be nice to get away, like some of us do, go someplace where there's not a cell phone signal, um, what happens if that goes down in an emergency? How do you get a hold of people? Sometimes this can have very serious consequences. So today we're going to talk about what you do when those towers are down. How do you communicate and talk about one piece of equipment that I take with me wherever I There are a couple pieces of equipment that I take with me pretty much whenever I'm outdoors and the VX6R is definitely one of them. With its small size and ultra rugged build and many features and mods that are available for it, the VX6R is at home pretty much wherever I go. The radio is just plain solid and it's made of aluminum and polycarbonate resin that feels really good in my hand. You can tell right away that the VX6R is not an inexpensive plastic radio but has been built to be used in any environment and really built to last. It's submersible and has a VIS-7 waterproof rating that will keep it dry in three feet of water for up to 30 minutes. The radio comes with an optional belt clip and while some may choose not to use it, I found it to be well built and when attached, it feels really solid like it's part of the body. On the US model, this is a tri-band radio that can transmit at five watts on the two meter and the 70 centimeter band and at 1.5 watts on the 222 megahertz band. And this is before any mods. Now hams have long since embraced the spirit of experimentation with their equipment. This is nothing new. In that same spirit, I modded my VX6R giving it the ability to not only receive but transmit on the GMRS and the FRS frequencies among others. Now there are plenty of videos and tutorials out there that show how this mod is done. But keep in mind, you do so at your own risk. Basically it involves removing the battery, accessing the circuit board located behind it, removing one of the soldering bridges and performing a hard reset. Remember, if you broadcast on a frequency for which you don't have a license, you're in violation of the law and can be fined. Just be smart with your newfound superpower. I've used my mod to Is communicate with way? friends who may not have a ham radio and will usually be broadcasting on an FRS or GMRS frequency, like a Motorola walkabout. While there's some talk of this mod limiting the effectiveness of other bands, I haven't seen the result, I haven't been able to test it, but I've continued to broadcast effectively on both the 2 meter and the 70 centimeter bands. It's important to note that the Motorola type radios that are used to broadcast on this GMRS and FRS frequencies, they utilize a squelch system to be able to communicate on the subchannels. So if you're trying to communicate with one of these radios, you'll need to broadcast without using a subchannel, otherwise they won't be able to hear you. For more information, check out the CTCSS link below. The second upgrade that I made to my HT is replacing the stock rubber duck antenna with a whip antenna. In the comments of my EDC video that I did a couple weeks back, Bert Barlow asked about the antenna and I wanted to give a little bit more information about it. Richard Bateman, KD7BBC, is the name of the guy who sells these homebrew antennas on a site, signalstuff.com. I picked up one of these about a year ago and I've been thoroughly impressed. The antennas are made from a nitinol super elastic wire and can actually be rolled up for easy storage when needed. These antennas, which he calls the super elastic signal stick, come in both SMA male and female, as well as BNC connections, and are virtually indestructible. They come with a lifetime warranty and are rugged enough to go with your VX6R. If you're in the market, I highly recommend you check these out. For 20 bucks, you really can't go wrong. There's a link in the comments below. When I first got this radio, the first thing that hit me was just how well thought out it was. You can tell that it was built with a purpose and that the engineers wanted a radio for themselves and not just a product to make money on. Really, the fact that this radio has been around for as long as it has is a huge testament to just how good it is. The radio is highly configurable and can be set up exactly to your preference. While I could spend an hour or more deep diving on the different features, I'll focus on just a few that I've found to be super helpful. The first feature is the wake-up setting. With this setting turned on, one push to the power button now puts the radio in wake-up mode and helps save the battery when the battery life is at a premium. It remains off, but momentarily turns on to check for a signal before shutting off again. And you can set the interval of this off to be 5, 10, 20, even 30 seconds. I found this to be super helpful on a week-long hike, 
Just remember that if you're using this feature to tell your party in advance that they'll have to talk for at least the amount of time for which you have your radio set to wake up. If not, they may have trouble reaching you. There's nothing quite as frustrating as realizing the channel you're supposed to be on has been changed by accident. The lockout feature is next. With the push and hold of a button, the radio can be configured to lock whatever you want locked. There are seven lockout combinations to choose, including locking the keyboard, the dial, or the push to talk button as well. Or you can lock out all of them. A push and hold of the same button and the radio is unlocked. While this is a pretty common feature on many radios, the customization options and the frequency of which I use it make this a very handy button to have. Additional features on the radio include expected functionality like quick adjustments to the sensitivity of the squelch, or the ability to set the broadcast power to high or low, or even access a pretty bright LED light among others. I could go on and on, but this radio is really packed with a list of features. The only feature that I feel could have been better would be making the LED light more accessible. As it is, it's buried inside the settings and a bit difficult to turn on. But as this is a radio and not a flashlight, you can tell I'm reaching just a bit to find something negative. The bottom line is that this radio has been tried and tested and it shows no signs of letting up. Other models have come onto the market that include additional bells and whistles, but I really do love the simplicity of this radio. If you're in the market for an HT radio that will perform for years to come, I would consider the Yaesu VX6R as a serious contender for your cash. Well, that's it, everyone. I hope you enjoyed the review of the VX6R. Um, if you did, please subscribe, like the video, or comment below. I love getting your comments and hearing what you guys have to say. Um, until next time, my name is Frank for Trick Tac Toe. We'll see you at 73, everyone. Bye bye.